We are a nation in crisis. Royalist and Republican struggles have resulted in the abolition of the Second Hellenic Republic and our economy is kaput. Foreign monopolies and the German Schacht plan is sucking our money from us and the Great Depression has only made things worse. Despite the political instability our country is heading for an election, monarchists, republicans, communists and fascists are all preparing for it. But due to growing support among the other parties the king has denounced the elections and tried to stop them. In order to assert our dominance and keep the elections on schedule we must place him under house arrest. So the 18th of March the elections arrived, promising to restore the glory of Greece and with the support of many monarchists who switched to their sides the fascists managed to narrowly win the elections. But they are still controversial and as they took power the people began revolting. Crete broke away and Thrace and central Macedonia joined Bulgaria. Before we can do anything about it we have to recover from our economic collapse. With the fascists in power we will copy the German economy to learn how they managed to recover from their own economic problems. Still we will have to follow simple capitalistic theories such as devaluating our currency to stimulate foreign capital flow. We will also start to pay back our debts in bulk with any money we can find lying around. To succeed in our recovery we must also utilize our strengths of farming and luxury goods and also expand our weak military industry just like the Germans did. This will also help us reclaim our glorious Greek past. And with that we are ready to secure the fatherland. Crete is Greece, the breakaway state will be annexed. And seeing how we had slowly managed to build up our economy they didn't resist. Next up Bulgaria. Their annexation of our two states are unacceptable. Give them back or the third Balkan war will be around the corner. Luckily they caved in for our bluff since their army also is horribly undersupplied and even restricted. Then something amazing happened, the Italian nation was plunged in a civil war. This means Mussolini's government could be ready to submit the Dodocanese islands and allow us to annex northern Epirus from Albania. Beginning with the latter, Albania was horrified of an invasion and after signing a non-aggression pact with them, they agreed to give away the state. Now on to the Dodecanese islands, Mussolini has started losing his grip over northern Italy and retreated all his garrisons from the island, so he couldn't really resist anything. Our fascist government has shown its worth and without any war our economy has managed to improve greatly. Just as the Germans we put the unemployed to work on infrastructure projects across our country and our tobacco industry one of our most profitable exports have also been expanded. Together with that we have expanded our mining industry. Our country is full of resources so this is a natural step to stop imports from other countries. This will help us crack down on foreign monopolies so that Greece truly can be free. But there is no point in cracking down all of them. That would hurt our economy too much. Instead we will begin negotiations with those who are willing to cooperate. Alright we are now ready to puppet Argentina. Let me explain. The first Argentinian president has roots in Greece so it is rightfully our territory and the Argentinians had no problem joining us. In Italy the communists have won the civil war and they have taken an aggressive stance against us. We aren't ready to face them off so we will have to prepare against them. Massive fortifications will be built along our eastern coast with the help of German engineering. The German Schachtplan isn't that bad for our economy and it has actually helped us. But we will secure a better deal with them in the name of our close friendship. Our economy is now mostly recovered and our country is the most stable in an eternity. Copying the German Hitler youth we have created four Hellenic divisions to keep our people loyal. All this copycatting has allowed our economy to turn into a strong western economy, a powerful one. We are ready, Greece will rise from the ashes, our history of strong empires will be reclaimed. 
We can choose to copy many of them, Byzantine, Rome, Macedonia or trying to resurrect the Megali idea. But we must look further back than this, all the way back to the start of Greek civilization. We will reclaim their colonies all over the Mediterranean and return their enlightened culture. From now on we will be known as the Empire of Ancient Hellenas. And to succeed in our conquest we must reform the glory of the great Spartan warriors. Our soldiers will become unstoppable war machines. To realize these ambitions we must reform our armed forces. Our Hellenic army will be modernized and its tactics will be reformed. But we will also begin to reclaim our proud maritime history. By clearing land for new factories we will be able to construct several dockyards around our country. While it will take a long time to build up our navy, we are still ready to expand. The Germans have been joined by the British in their war against the Czech Entente which has led to a destabilized French nation. Voices in Lebanon for unification with us to form a Greek Phoenician Empire has grown louder and louder. And with British soldiers closer than before, the French allowed us to liberate our Phoenician brothers. We can now turn towards an actual enemy. We will take advantage of a weak Spain after their civil war. But we have to hurry. The Italian and Turks are justifying against us. We have prepared a naval invasion and we launched it immediately as we declared war. The superior Spanish navy wasn't deployed so that's how we managed to get naval superiority. From our homeland we traversed the whole Mediterranean Sea all the way to Catalonia. There was one division defending the city but against a 10 times stronger enemy they couldn't do anything. After kicking the division out we could secure the rest of Catalonia and the north of eastern Aragon in a few days. We have 100 days to defeat the Spanish and return home. We began by expanding in the west and managed to encircle one division and capture Bilbao. We would later lose the city but in return we managed to capture Zaragoza. From Zaragoza we marched south to Teruel and all the way to Valencia. This meant we had encircled four divisions. 70 days left. This was more than enough. The Spanish had far too few divisions to fill the whole front so we could march around them encircling even more divisions, destroying them and opening the front even more. Franco's regime hasn't been able to core all states yet so we managed to win despite not capturing all of them. About 50 days left we have annexed our colonies and Franco has been allowed to stay in power as a loyal puppet. Our army has been brought back home and our Spartan practices of every man to the army has allowed us to deploy 666,000 men already. We are more than ready to face the Italians. All our ports are garrisoned since the Italians will have naval superiority. We have had to retreat from Thrace due to supply issues but Thessaloniki will not fall. If we need reinforcements we can always get support from our Argentinian puppet. And then the 21st of April the Italians declared war and Turkey joined. They immediately tried to capture our islands but our defenses were too strong for them. But really not much happened after that. They had managed to capture Thrace but they couldn't break our line in central Macedonia. So we could divert a lot of effort in building up Athens and making use of our lands. Now since they aren't attacking us this could be our chance to attack. They have continued to try and capture our islands of Mytilini so they are horribly unorganized. This meant we managed to cross over to the Turkish mainland and capture our first Turkish town with almost no resistance. Since we don't have much troops there we decided to stop after that. But we have another magnificent plan. The Turks have 9 divisions in Thrace so if we land a naval invasion behind them they would be all destroyed. And having captured the Spanish navy we managed to get naval superiority in the Aegean Sea. As we launched our invasion our navy immediately got intercepted by the main Italian fleet. Luckily our troops could continue and we had soon landed in Alexandropolis. We had also successfully fled the naval battle only losing one light cruiser. 
With Alexandropolis captured, we also managed to capture the port in Edirne and could then turn to destroy the encircled divisions. It took a long time but eventually we had crushed all 11 of them. Now we have two bad news and one good. The good is that we have successfully mobilized our economy and the Great Depression is no longer a thing. The first bad thing is that Portugal has joined the war against us. Luckily Franco has managed to stay neutral and with several Argentinian divisions in the region we have managed to defend our colonies. The second bad thing is that the Italians are naval invading Thessaloniki. Luckily we had divisions nearby and could easily push them out before they captured the port. We can now turn back to destroy Turkey. <laughs> Turkey has been destroyed. Now Italy is the only major left in the faction. Trying to defeat them will be difficult. The first natural step is to liberate all of Albania. But they have more than 10 divisions per tile defending it and even Soviet volunteers helping out. So what if we simply skip this step and go straight to Italy? After taking 7 days to plan the invasion we managed to get exactly the 50% naval superiority we needed to launch it. Our troops launched from their ports and we had soon landed in Italy. We met two divisions in Taranto but the port of Bari was open and from there we managed to encircle Taranto and later enter it. We have successfully landed in Italy but to continue north we will have to send reinforcements. Still with only one camel division in the south we managed to encircle it and destroy it while the reinforcements arrived in the north. The Italians had constantly tried to kick us out so they were unorganized. This allowed us, despite lacking equipment, to capture the rest of Puglia. After our supply problems had been fixed by adding logistic companies to our divisions we were able to continue. We victoriously entered Napoli and encircled the bulk of their army defending the north. With only 5 Italian divisions left on the front we could quickly move to northern Italy. Capturing Rome a few days later and encircling as many Italian reinforcements as we could. As we arrived to northern Italy our divisions began spreading out and they couldn't do anything to stop us. The last Italian stronghold was in Istria. But calling it a stronghold is exaggerated as we captured Trieste and Rijeka almost immediately. Now all that is left is Sicily and Calabria. They had many divisions but they were weak so we managed to encircle half of them and reach the strait to Sicily. On the other side in Messina they only had a single garrison defending it. While it was difficult we still managed to cross and capture the rest of Sicily. After this the Italians surrendered and we had won the war. We annexed all of Turkey and Libya. In Italy we took all the former Greek colonies and puppeted the rest. Portugal was also puppeted. We have now come a long way on restoring ancient Helenas. But there is still a long way to go. They had colonies in more of Africa, several islands occupied by the UK, Crimea and Bulgarian Yugoslavian lands. Most of these lands are occupied occupied by the Axis power. This means we will have to fight our good German friends. But if we want to defeat them and the British we must build up our army a lot. Luckily we have a ton of manpower after our course in Italy have been liberated. And we will also have to give up our claims in Crimea. The Soviets have to aid us against the Germans not the other way around. But it will take time to build up an army so in the meantime we send volunteers to Japan and the Dutch East Indies both fighting the Germans. We managed to capitulate the Qing China rebellion against Japan and could then go to attack China. In the Dutch East Indies we successfully liberated the whole island of Java and could continue to Sumatra. Back in Europe the Germans had declared war on Switzerland and the Soviets. Soon we will strike too and the Germans will probably have no clue. 
Three months later we were completely prepared. The plan is to first secure the Mediterranean by capturing Gibraltar and the Suez before the British Navy arrives. And if they do, we still have a good chance to defeat it with our captured Italian fleet. As the Germans approached Moscow we declared war on the British. All across the Mediterranean our plans sprung into action. Having only one division in Gibraltar we captured the city one day into the war. As expected the British Navy was somewhere else and we managed to launch our invasion towards the Suez Canal. To hinder any divisions from reinforcing the canal we began attacking from Lebanon and Turkey into Syria. The British defenses were so weak we even managed to encircle all their Syrian troops. Landing in Port Said we met the complete opposite of what we thought we would. Instead of British resistance we arrived to hugs and kisses by the local Egyptian population. Cairo and Alexandria were both liberated. Maybe once the war is over we will rebuild the great Pharos of Alexandria. Having captured the Suez Canal all British forces in the east of it have now been encircled. It wasn't difficult to crush them and we even had time to continue down to Luxor and east to Matru. The whole Mediterranean has been sealed off from any enemy navies and we can now naval invade all British islands in it. But first we had to capture Morocco and Algeria to stop any divisions reinforcing from there. This wasn't a problem, we met at most 5 German divisions. Now on to the islands, the first and most important was Cyprus, no resistance at all. Next Malta, one Malayan division that at first held their ground but as more of our divisions arrived they got crushed. And lastly Corsica, the most difficult since there were 5 divisions protecting the island. But we completely overwhelmed them by attacking from Sardinia, landing behind them and landing in Ajaico itself. After a week of battles we had succeeded in capturing the island. Now the first step of our plan has been a total success. But all hasn't gone so good for everyone. The Soviets have lost their 3 major cities and are about to lose the Caucasus too. Luckily for them we are sending in divisions in the south to stop the Germans from reaching Turkey. Still we can move to the next step attacking Germany. The Bulgarian front is way too fortified for us to break through but the French front is weak. We have captured most of France, but intensified German supply bombings have halted our offensive. Luckily we are soon ready to design and deploy our first fighters. Meanwhile in the USSR we had stopped the Germans from reaching the Soviet republics in the Caucasus. And we had also liberated Crimea and the city of Krasnodar. This will hopefully keep the Soviets motivated to fight. Back to Germany they have reinforced the French front with divisions from the Bulgarian front which only has 4 divisions on each tile now. With support of an old Italian railway gun we managed to break through their first lines of defense. Or more like their only line of defense. As we chased their divisions north we didn't get stopped by any reinforcements. Soon the whole Bulgarian coastline had been captured. While we attacked in the east we had also managed to capture the historically important region of Macedonia. This means we are close to Sofia and we can destroy Bulgaria. We started attacking from the east and quickly managed to break through. As we did we also began an offensive from Macedonia to stop Bulgarian troop movements. This allowed us to arrive to Sofia as only a single unorganized division guarded it. While the whole Bulgarian army surrendered once we captured the city many Axis members were still fighting. 
but with our Macedonian offensive also succeeding, we managed to encircle most of them and crush them. We are now definitely stronger than the Germans. We have killed so many of them that our army is bigger than theirs and our new fighters are shredding the Luftwaffe. They are especially weak in the Balkans where we just destroyed one of their allies. A massive offensive would suit the area well. We started attacking from the whole Bulgarian front and even Italy. It went the fastest in Romania where the terrain carried us all the way to Odessa liberating a second important Soviet city. We had also reached Hungary where resistance was the stiffest. Still as we captured Belgrade we began attacking with our 10 divisions in Zadar to try and split their forces. With even more forces arriving from northern Italy we managed to encircle all Axis forces in Yugoslavia and crush them. A horrifying defeat for the Germans and they will be even more horrified once we capture the same amount of core German territory. Our fighters are deployed in France and with them and our supply planes we are stronger than ever. Still we had a massive problem to capture the rest of the Maginot line. So what if we instead just do like the Germans and go around it? While we don't have any beautiful tanks like the Germans did, our infantry is still fast enough to partially blitz through the Benelux. Brussels, Antwerpen, Rotterdam and lastly Amsterdam were all liberated fairly quickly. After having reorganized our divisions and captured all of Mosselland, we decided to continue into Germany from Benelux. Essen and Dortmund were the first cities to fall and Frankfurt, our first major German city, was also captured. From there we went more north towards Magdeburg and Hamburg. After a bit of back and forth around the latter, we won and entered Kiel, Rostock and Lüdbeck too. Meanwhile, back to the Balkan front, our troops had broke through the Hungarian defenses and managed managed to capture Budapest. Pex was a bit more difficult to capture since it was protected by a river but having already crossed it in Vojvodina we could march from there and secure the city. As the Hungarian army began surrendering en masse, the front became too fragile for the Germans to continue to hold in Austria. We found a road almost completely open to Vienna and as a bonus we encircled almost 24 divisions in Graz. Back in our northern front our generals had decided to continue despite us telling them not to. Still their offensive was successful and they had arrived in the outskirts of Berlin. There was actually only a single Bulgarian division defending the city so we captured it in about two days. It is completely over for the Germans now. We started attacking on all fronts, telling our generals and soldiers that the faster they advanced, the quicker they would be able to go back home. We captured Stuttgart and liberated almost all of Czechoslovakia. As we closed in on Munich, the German army surrendered both on our front and in the Soviet Union. The Axis has now been completely kicked out of mainland Europe. All that is left is the terrified and weak Great Britain. Ever since we have captured France they had prepared for a naval invasion. Their whole fleet has left Asia and North America in the hopes of defending the home islands. But we have a trick up our sleeve. Remember the transport planes that were used to supply France? Well they can be used to carry specialized paratroopers trained secretly on the island of Crete. The plan is to safely transport them over to England and land around the most eastern port cities but also in several air bases to secure complete air superiority. We are ready now, our 4000 fighters began their mission over southern England and the English Channel managing to gain air superiority. Our paratroopers landed in two waves and met almost no British resistance. They have massively miscalculated the whole situation. The paratroopers entered London and Dover without meeting any resistance and we could send over 1 million men to England. As they arrived our paratroopers had managed to capture Birmingham as well. The first thing the reinforcements did was to clear out any British strongholds, such as the ones in Plymouth and Norwich. After having crushed them we turned north with our whole million man army and simply entered Liverpool, Manchester, Hull and Newcastle at the same rate as if there wouldn't be any British units defending them. Having reached the border with Scotland, Great Britain, the last Axis nation surrendered. 
It took a long time to redraw the borders of Europe and Africa, but we were soon satisfied. All the former Greek colonies were re-established and we created puppet regimes in all of our conquered lands. More importantly, we completely demobilized the British and German economies to stop any uprisings against us. The Greek Phoenician Empire has risen from the ground and secured the Greek nation. With the biggest army, air force and industry we will reign as the world leaders. Athens has become the center of the earth. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.